Hello, uh, today we're going to have a look at Substance Sampler um, and we're going to make a material real quick with a, a few uh, basic principles. So I, I think Sampler is much sort of um, unloved really and I don't give it enough love, that's for sure. Um, but I think it could be a real powerful tool when you, you know, get the hang of it. So I've started Sampler here and we're just going to create a new uh, one and it comes up with this interface. So over here we have what will eventually become the material stack and over here we have various assets. So there are now starter assets and we've got materials, we've got um, HDRIs of which we have none and then we have a bunch of filters. And the trick is, is to take your uh, materials um, and then combine them with filters to bring out a material. And today I'm going to have a go at a kind of a rough uh, stone wall. So my first thought is, well, what material is closest uh, to that? And I, I believe we have a rock down here somewhere. Yes, there we go. So the first thing I want to do is just drag that rock over into my material stack over here and it will calculate and apply to our model, which is great. So each of our materials will have a number of parameters which you can change. So we have our stone color, for example. Uh, we have a level of variation if we want to update that. Uh, we have polish and a grain intensity and roughness. And we have metallic, which I don't want, obviously, not in this case. So that gives me my basic material uh, and we'll go back and we'll update that. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave that as it is. So now I want a filter. So in my filters, we've got all sorts of things which will add surface detail and all sorts of other um, you know, functions to our uh, stack. And for this one, I'm just going to pick out um, stone wall. It's down here somewhere. There we go. So I've got a stone wall here, and if I drag and drop that above our rock, it will apply to our material. So we can see if we have a look around, I'm just left clicking to rotate, everything looks a bit flat. I mean, it looks okay, it looks fine, uh, but we've got some, you know, parameters again. Uh, we have a pattern, so we have a rubble, we have uh, irregular rubble and so on and so forth. Uh, but I'm going to stick with flat stone. Uh, we can update the roundness of our stones to make them less square, I guess. Um, how thick our mortar is going to be. And one that I think is uh, quite important, our mortar height. Currently it's at 0.5, but I want that to be quite deep. So I'm going to take that back to somewhere near zero. And now you can see I'm getting actual kind of definition between the mortar and the stones, which is what I was looking for. Terrific. Uh, we have a mortar color and we have a grime amount. So this is kind of a built in dirt to uh, to this material. And if I increase that, you'll see that we get sort of dirt creeping onto the edges of our stone. OK, so that's a very basic material. Um, and it's taken me a couple of, you know, uh, one material, one filter to get there. Uh, but of course we can enhance it. So, I mean, one thing we might want to do is put some cracks into our initial rock. So in our filters, we have a cracks filter. So I can drag that between the rock and the stone wall and that will apply. And that's put some cracks into our rocks. And again, we have parameters. So these look a bit kind of harsh and deep to me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to our um, advanced parameters and I'm going to take the height range down just to, you know, soften that up a bit. I don't want them to be so, you know, cracked that uh, they could be falling in half. I just want some surface cracks. There we go. And we have crack spread, so we can make them, you know, go further out, and expand, and we can reduce and we can increase the number of cracks we have. 
Okay, uh, we also have a normal intensity, which we'll uh, have a look at shortly. Um, so one of the last things I'd want to do with this is pop some dirt over the top. So if I type in dirt into my filter, filter there, uh, I can drag and drop dirt over the top of everything. And now that's going to apply dirt all the way down the stack, over the mortar, over the bricks, etc, etc. And we have some options here, some presets. Uh, so we can have a heavy preset, we have a light preset and a soft preset. Uh, but I'm just going to go with dirt for the moment. Uh, it's adaptive surface. Uh, we can have it in the cracks or on edges. Let's pop it on the edges. That's quite nice. I like that. Uh, but then we can also adjust just how much dirt with the volume. And we can take the quantity down. Increase our spread and increase our contrast. And of course we have our, our custom base color down here which you can uh, amend and adjust so that's a very quick and basic material um, in the next section what i'm going to do is just go through a few things to look at um, and then we're going to uh, build this into a, a material for use in substance painter so i'll talk to you then Okay, so now we have our uh, basic setup going, we can go through it and update some parameters. For example, my mortar on here, uh, I don't think matches my brick very well. So under the stone wall, we've got a mortar color. So if I click on that, I get my little color picker up and I'm gonna use my color picker. Just click on it and then pick a color from my stone. Now that's come out relatively bluish, uh, so I'm just going to knock that down to a more warmer orangey colour and perhaps give it a little bit more saturation. There we go, to match those in a little bit better. And of course, you know, you could decide to go lighter or, uh, well, you could go darker, I suppose, but not much darker. Uh, depending upon you know the look you're you're after in fact i think lighter is better there we go okay now here's the thing i've just changed that parameter um but for another material using this kind of thing i might want a different one so thinking ahead when i publish this what i want is to be able to change that color so this little pin here exposes that parameter uh, in the material so when I export it to substance painter I'll be able to change that color and if we look up here under exposed parameters it's telling me that that's there so I also don't really like the color of this uh, grime so I can click there uh, perhaps I'll pick a darker uh, uh, color from the from the brick Ooh, that one there I think and I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit and give it a little bit of color there we go something like that and again because i wanted to change it here it gives me an idea that i might want to change it elsewhere so i'm going to expose that parameter so that you know my material you know can be a bit more uh dynamic as it were uh, because if you know it's just this material it might not fit you know with these colors somewhere else i want to be able to change them so with that in mind uh, i want to expose the stone color as well and i may want to expose the variation uh, well yeah <laughs> sorry my brain is stumbling uh, I, I might want to change any of these things but generally speaking i'll try and keep it to a, a sensible kind of level so the cracks for example i might want to expose something there uh, i might want to expose my height range because we changed that uh, maybe even the normal intensity now i talked about the normal intensity earlier and just so you know if you click on this 2d view here you can look at each of your channels 
so the normal looks like that and that looks pretty nice but you know perhaps it's not that strong um, so in the stone wall if we go to advanced parameters we can increase the normal intensity there and you'll see that that has a little effect but again because I've changed it, it gives me an idea that I might want to change it on different projects so I've exposed that parameter uh, again the dirt we might want to expose some of this we might want to expose uh, for example the mode so that we can go uh, either with a grunge map or adaptive or both and we want to be able to change whether it goes on edges or cavities and any of these essentially you may want to do but you know use your judgment essentially okay so now that I've done all that uh, I think I'm pretty much ready to publish this so I'll pause here and in the next section we'll publish this and see what it looks like in uh, substance painter that is I'll talk to you then okay so uh, before I publish um, let me close that I'm going to open this metadata tab here so I want to give it a name uh, so I'll call it I don't know uh, stone wall uh, description uh, I don't know ye oldy stone wall uh, a category if I wanted one uh, author well that's me uh, there's a date uh, date, date we've got uh, physical size which I don't have uh, but I want to put a tag on this of brick so that will help me when I'm searching uh, within substance painter to to find it I'm not going to rate it that would be rude um, and I'm going to leave our template on none there we go so with those set um, I also noticed that in my 2d window here I've got a couple of uh, channels which I really don't want um, so over here we have in this little kind of star thing here our channel settings and I can turn off the ones I don't want so I don't want specular level I don't want opacity because there is none <coughs> ambient occlusion I think is nice uh, physical size I don't have uh, height metallic it's not really any metallic in this uh, roughness normal and base color that's good okay so with that done we have uh, this little share button down here and we can export it so we could export it as simply uh, images uh, which I'm not going to do but I am going to send to substance painter and that's going to calculate everything and build the package and eventually oh, I believe it's done uh, it should pop up in my substance painter as you can see I, I had substance open already and it's already uh, selected and highlighted it for me uh, and I've got a bit of a wall here which I just thought I'd test it on so we can drag and drop that in there whoops help if I was on the wall part of it wouldn't it and then we can update to get going so the tiling is not uh, ideal um, so did I expose the <laughs> I didn't did I I could have exposed the number of bricks for example uh, to deal with that uh, or I can update my um, tiling here to get a, a better number let's go and do that on the pillars as well there we go so now we have a, uh, a brick wall and we can of course come in here so so I don't want my stone color to be that I want it to be darker actually this is a silly thing let me delete this I'm going to go to the wall and then right click on this stone wall and instantiate across texture sets to the pillar and then click OK and now whatever changes I make on this will uh, populate over to all of them so I can update my stone color uh, we can update our mortar color make it lighter 
darker or you know a completely different color if we really wanted to uh, we can update our uh, dirt color could even go maybe have a, a greeny color on this one to have a bit of uh, moss growth I guess there we go Let's close that uh, rock color variation let's take that down or oh, we'll take it right up there we go and we've got our height range so if I can change that that's going to change the height range it's calculating on and give us another effect so I think that's really great it, it's been you know it's taken me far longer to explain it to you than it would for you to do it um, but yeah I think it really shows kind of the, the power of sampler and how you can get something out of it really quickly I mean I wouldn't just do it like this you know I wouldn't just leave this textured this way you know there are other things I would do to you know bring this all together I would add more materials over the top of this in painter but substance uh, sampler has given me this good base that I can start from so I hope you found that useful um, if you have any comments or questions please put them below and uh, I'll talk to you again another time.